Here we have a man, we'll call him Rick, who's arriving at work on a typical day and parking in a very typical spot. Why can't Rick find his car? He's parked it in this lot almost a thousand times before. Strange how it's difficult to find almost every day after work. Let's introduce a new factor. What if this happened? As Rick got out of his car, a man wearing a frilly apron and a raccoon hat says, No, I can find a really small hippo? Mm -hmm. What made the location of the car more remembered this time? As you may have noticed, the man wearing the frilly apron made the memory more memorable. But what physically happened in the brain of Rick? I know what happens. It's all what neuroscientists call short-term memory. It involves a seahorse and Canada. Deep in the brain, there is a curved structure with a peculiar shape. In 1587, a Venetian anatomist named Julius Caesar Aranzi. No, not that Caesar. Dr. Ronzi was the first to decide that this structure looked like, to him at least, a seahorse. The term seahorse didn't sound sciencey enough. So he used the Latin word we use today, which is hippocampus. At that time, science had no idea what the function of the hippocampus was. Turns out, it keeps track of short-term memories, but more on this in a minute. Remember the mighty hippo on campus. Corny, I know, but now you remember the term. How do we locate the hippocampus in a real brain? The link between the hippocampus and short-term memory was discovered in Canada, by mistake. In 1926, a boy was born in Canada, and neuroscientists lovingly referred to him as H.M. H.M. suffered from terrible seizures that originated in his hippocampus. So at the age of 27, doctors decided to cut that region that contained the hippocampus. Star Trek is bad Star Wars. After the surgery, H.M. was deemed cured of his seizures. However, there was an unanticipated side effect. He lost all ability to form new memories. He was, from that moment on, essentially frozen in that moment in time. He unwittingly became the perfect subject for research concerning the hippocampus. We now know that the hippocampus is like this Etch-a-Sketch, where memories from immediate world are written and rewritten all the time. Okay, so this temporary sort of cluster of memories is constantly updated, allows us to sort of function in a linear fashion, and helps remember why I'm in this car, why this, the sun is up, and why this person's in my back seat. Just imagine if there was a disease that destroyed the hippocampus. Just think about how, how devastating that would be. What would happen is you'd be robbed of everything just right now, the memories of right now. So the hippocampus keeps a scrolling memory of right now. So the question is, what takes memories from the short-term process into long-term memory? So like from, let's say, a week ago, or a year ago, or even 10 years ago. There are two main avenues to select a short-term memory and cement it as a long-term memory. Either we're gonna employ something called the amygdala or we'll use repetition. The first time I didn't know where my car was parked because nothing significant happened. Nothing caused the formation of a long-term memory. Whereas the second time, something significant did occur. Hey, buddy, know where I can find a really small hippo? So the reason I remembered my car in the second situation is that the peculiar man excited my amygdala, which demanded that my brain gather details from that moment and store them in my long-term memory. 10 years from now, I'll have forgotten the entire day, except for that particular moment. Captain Kirk's awesome, the car sucks. So that's the story of Rick and why memory is so important. But what was really with that hippo?